Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to share with you two very, very important indexes, uh, the glycemic index versus the insulin index. Now, I'm just going to pretend you've never even heard about this one, so just to keep it really basic. So the glycemic index is the scale of foods that has influence over your blood sugars within two to three hours. So there's certain foods like jelly beans, for example, that you eat that you trigger a lot of sugar response or a lot of sugar in your blood. It spikes up, okay? And so that would be very high in the scale. But eating celery, which is a carbohydrate, does not create that same effect, okay? That would be low on the scale. And that's the glycemic index. It has to do with how fast carbohydrates or sugars turn into or affect the blood sugars, okay? And you have different things to alter that, like, uh, like uh, fiber, you know, how much sugar that is in that uh, carbohydrate, that type of thing. Then the insulin index is all those non-carbohydrate foods that affect insulin, okay? So in other words, when you eat sugar, you trigger insulin, but there are other foods that you eat that won't necessarily, they're not sugary foods, but they do trigger insulin, okay? So we're gonna explain that. Now, here's the thing. Insulin is the hormone that regulates blood sugars. It tends to lower blood sugars. In the presence of insulin, it's almost impossible to lose weight. So our goal is to have a low insulin, low sugar situation, okay? So check this out. So we have the glycemic index. So really high on the scale would be like just plain sugar. And then potato is very high in the scale. So this turns into sugar really fast. Um, white bread is high. Whole wheat bread is, is just like a point less. It's not any, it's almost equivalent. So if you're thinking you're eating whole wheat bread and it's not turning into sugar very fast, it's actually very high in the scale. I think it's like 74, uh, so it's pretty high. So now low on the list, and by the way, I created links below so you can see the whole scale on both of these scales. So that's why I didn't want to write it out. So we have low on the list. Peanuts is very low. I think it's like a, it's like a 14, something like that. So that's pretty low. And then hummus is a six. So hummus would be a very low glycemic thing to consume, a good snack to eat, okay? So that's just kind of that. Now let's take a look at this insulin index. And this might surprise you. Very high on the list is whey protein powder. So whey protein is very low fat, very lean, and that will trigger insulin pretty high. And then we even have lean beef will also trigger insulin, okay? Now this is kind of goes against what you've been told, but that's very high in the scale. And then as we go down the list, egg whites, because it's less fat, is higher on the list. Egg yolks are lower on the list. It creates less of an insulin response. And then butter bacon is even lower. So my point is, <laughs> when people are trying to lose weight, what do they do? They avoid the fat. And what do they eat? More protein. But they have to understand the scale right here. Fat actually will buffer and lower the insulin effect. So if you were gonna have some beef, make sure it has some fat in it because fat is one of the things that is almost neutral when it comes down to insulin and it doesn't turn into sugar. Yes, it has calories, but it doesn't create the effect on insulin, so it's great for diabetics. So here's the confusing part. If protein triggers insulin, which is a fat-making hormone, then why do people lose weight on protein, okay? And that is because these proteins also trigger the fat burning hormones like glucagon and growth hormone. Okay, so that's why that can work. But the, the, the thing to remember is that we want to keep insulin low to actually enhance the weight loss process. So if you were going to have protein, don't go so lean. Add some fat to it. Make sure it's not so low fat. If you're going to have eggs, have the whole eggs, not just the egg whites. And I think you're going to lose more weight and you're actually going to be healthier doing that. Okay? So I just wanted to kind of summarize what these indexes are and I have the links below so you can go ahead and study those and go ahead and apply this information. The goal is to keep insulin low and it just so happens that the only foods that don't really trigger insulin that much are the fats the exact foods that people have been avoiding.